Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. And today, well, technically yesterday, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix of 2023 happened and it was pretty dull. In fact, I watched the 1000 miles of Sebring, which is around eight hours long. And every moment of that race was more exciting than any point of the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. I mean, there isn't really much more to say than that. This was a really boring Grand Prix to watch. Not a lot happened, but we still had, you know, the usual FIA fastest and Ferrari being Ferrari. Red Bull dominated again, of course. There isn't really... What else is there to say? It was another fantastic performance from Alonso for Aston Martin. Could have been better. Got a lot of penalties. Some of those penalties were overturned. But a second podium in a row. I don't think that's ever happened for Aston Martin slash Racing Point slash Force India. And it's probably been a long time since Alonso had two podiums in a row. There's a lot of positives to take away from this result for Aston Martin. Even though Lance Stroll broke down. Which is unfortunate because he has been driving well and he did do a good overtake around the outside on the first lap. It's a shame that he couldn't get to the end. But at least he seems to be performing pretty well in a much higher standard car. This was Sergio Perez pretty much led the entire race. I mean, once he got past Alonso, it was a good move as well. Clean, no issues. And it was all pretty easy from there for his fifth Formula One win. Pretty good from the Mexican and he's currently right in the title hunt, even though we're only two races in. Verstappen drove up from 15th after his issues in qualifying and he managed to get to second and it looked fairly easy for him as well. I think the reliability issues will worry Red Bull a little bit. It's been a problem for them in the past, but right now, two one two finishes to start the season, it honestly couldn't be much better. In fact, they've only lost out on one point so far because Guan Yu Zhou took the fastest lap on at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Uh, Ferrari, I mean, it wasn't a bad strategy call that caught them out. It was more the hard tyre didn't really work for them. And the safety car came out at a bad time. They looked, well, yeah, both cars looked quick and qualifying. And it just, no race pace. And so relegated to a 6th from the 7th in what's been a really bad start to the year for them. Mercedes will be fairly happy with this result. It's not amazing. I think qualifying is actually a bigger issue for them right now. Their race pace looks okay. Yes, Hamilton got swamped by Verstappen and Leclerc. But that's not entirely unexpected on pace, and he was on hard tyres as well, so that's about right. And he managed, he really benefited from the safety car coming out when it did. He was in fifth. Couldn't get any higher on his medium tyres, including getting past his teammate, so. You take the good with the bad for Mercedes, I think, from this race. Russell put in another fantastic performance. Can't fault him at all. He held off Hamilton. Again, he sort of benefited from the safety car, but it sort of still left him where he, or where he was originally. But it was all around a decent performance for Mercedes. What I say about qualifying is, Russell qualified well, but Hamilton, he started seventh from the grid again. But when you think Leclerc had a 10 place grid drop, and Verstappen broke down in Q2. Those two cars would have probably qualified ahead of him, so Hamilton would have started this race ninth. So it's more Mercedes one lap pace. In the race, they're reliable as always. They seem to work pretty well on their tyres. I mean, they don't look especially quick, but they're racing quite efficiently. And 
this is what happened last year where yes they were slower than Red Bull and Ferrari at the start of the year but they finished races all the time in the points whereas you know Ferrari had their issues Red Bull had a couple of mechanical issues to start the year this is what Mercedes do very well and they're still doing that very well they don't really I mean off the pace of Red Bull yeah but so is everyone else and you can't really fault Mercedes as a team for that but I'm starting to wonder if this, these cars we've got now are terrible. That Mercedes seems to put out a lot. This whole we don't know what direction to go in, and there could be a radical redesign and all that. The car doesn't really seem that bad, especially not in the races. I suppose if you're qualifying in the midfield, there's always a risk something could happen. But I mean, if you qualify at the front, something could happen. But this was still. It wasn't amazing, but it was a decent enough performance for Mercedes. They'll be happy to finish ahead of the Ferraris. Uh, and while well, I say I did that video the other day about Mercedes need to get rid of Lewis Hamilton, the comments have started coming from the Hamilton fans. And as usual, they have their heads up their asses, and it's all you should delete your channel or YouTube should take you off the air and kill you. They don't really say it like that. It's something like that. Someone said YouTube should destroy your channel but what are Mercedes gaining from Hamilton being there he costs a lot of money and they're not getting amazing results right now might be time to start preparing for the future they're gonna to need to replace him at some point and they could probably get someone cheaper and to perform just as well George Russell's doing a fantastic job and he could definitely be the face of Mercedes going into the future they don't need Lewis Hamilton. And how much he costs, I'm sure his contract demands are probably quite large. He's very demanding of the team to get results. And at the moment, it's not going their way. And it's probably not going to go their way for a while. So if they're going to be stuck in the midfield, why keep Hamilton? Why pay the money? So I stand by that. I would... You know, start thinking about 2026. Maybe get someone in for a few years, get some experience. Hopefully get a car that's competitive again. That being said, they're not that far off the pace. It's not out of the realms of possibility that Mercedes could still take wins this year. It's not out of the realms of possibility that Lewis Hamilton could win a race this year. But it would mean finding a way to stop Red Bull. And right now, Red Bull look unbeatable. These first two races have been pretty dominant on their part as for everyone else Aston Martin again on the pace uh, the Alonso situation with him getting the penalties he parked outside of his pit box and got a five second penalty that's fine but in the second one it was had the rear Jackman touched the car when it was serving its penalty and therefore he would have got another penalty common sense dictates surely don't worry about it like if he's not lifting the car up let the jackman touch the fucking car it surely doesn't give him that much like otherwise he's gonna be like a centimeter away and as soon as the five seconds is up he's in there anyway alonso is not really gaining anything from it stupid rules and a lack of common sense is kind of the standard for the fia these days but stuff like this it's all a real bad show and they did overturn the penalty in the end because of a lack of clarity in the rules and they're gonna you know clarify what the rules are before Australia good idea but just don't do stuff like that just common sense nothing's been gained so don't worry about it other than that Aston Martin ran pretty solidly Alonso qualified second he had really good pace in the race he couldn't keep up the Red Bulls but then no one can and he did a pretty good job to come home in third as I said, Lance Stroll is disappointing, but he retired. But it's going really well for Aston Martin, and it's still going to be interesting to see how long they can keep this up for. As for everything else, nothing really happened in this race. So, I mean, towards the end of the race, after the safety car, there was... You had Perez leading Verstappen by about five seconds for, what, half the race? And then Verstappen had a steady gap to Alonso. Alonso had a steady gap to the Mercedes. They had a steady gap to the Ferraris. 
No one was really closing in, no one was really battling. The only real battle was for 10th place with Magnuson and Sonoda. They put on a pretty good show and Haas got their first point of the year whilst Alfa Tori are still looking for theirs. Decent performance from both Magnuson and Sonoda though and they probably both needed it. Hopefully Sonoda can get some points because I do like the Japanese driver. But so far Alfa Tori seemed really off the pace. Nick De Vries was down I think 13th or 14th. Nothing special. Williams as well struggled here, Albon retired, um, Logan Sargent had a really bad qualifying where he spun twice, but he didn't do anything terrible in the race, he was okay, but no pace, Alfa Romeo don't really seem on it at the moment, I'm not sure, I mean Alpine did okay, 8th and 9th, they'll be happy with a double points finish, but they're nowhere near catching the cars in front, and McLaren, no points so far, and another bad race. Piastri was unlucky to get damaged at the start, but he wasn't especially quick, but maybe he could have got 10th if it wasn't for that. But overall, this race was terrible. This was a really boring race. I hate the Saudi Arabia circuit. It's a really boring circuit. And unfortunately, these Middle East tracks, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Yas Marina, they're all really dull and they all have really long contracts. Qatar as well. They're going to be on the calendar for at least the next 10 years, unless something bad happens. And they're so dull. Has there ever been a good Grand Prix in the Middle East? There probably has. Bahrain's been on the calendar for a long time now. So there probably has been a good Bahrainian Grand Prix. In fact, Sakir, when they had the short circuit for COVID, that was a pretty good Grand Prix. But they're not going to use that circuit ever again. And we're stuck with the long one. And the racing there tends to be pretty bad. But yeah, this was a pretty dull Grand Prix. Um, two weeks time, we have the Australian Grand Prix. Hopefully it's better. I do love the Melbourne track. I will not be complaining about the track in the next Formula 1 review. Uh, I think next week there isn't a lot of motorsport on. I think Formula E and pretty much nothing else. NASCAR, I suppose. But I will be doing something next week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And thank you to everyone who has. Honestly, hopefully Formula 1 improves as 2023 goes on. So leave your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching and have a good one.